The reason why these rainforests fall is because they have no value in global markets unless you chop it down. Clearly, that's ridiculous. Uh, emissions from deforestation contribute 20% to the global greenhouse gas effect. So if we cannot resolve that, simply we are in jeopardy. We'll have to invent something. We, after all, as human beings, pay our medical experts, our doctors, to guard our, our well-being, don't, don't we? Why don't we pay someone else or, or reward someone else to guard our well-being, be it a forest, a piece of wetland, a piece of nature? The destruction of forests adds more greenhouse gases to the atmosphere than every car, plane and ship on Earth. Clearing for cattle, crops or otherwise degrading them is a setback to dealing with climate change. Science shows that halting deforestation in the tropics is key to tackling global temperature rise. Untouched forests store 60% more carbon than plantations. But right now, that tree cover is being cut down at a rate of 10.4 million hectares every year. At the moment, it's cheaper to cut down a rainforest and the consequent emissions go up into the atmosphere than it is to restore degraded land. In this episode of Nature Inc, we report on new schemes to make the tropical forest more profitable alive than dead. This tree took perhaps 200 years to grow. Over its lifetime, it has taken up to a ton of carbon from the atmosphere, roughly the carbon footprint of one person's return flight from London to New York. The Amazon forest contains about 100 billion such trees. Together, they store between 60 and 90 billion tons of carbon. But it costs around five US dollars to cut down a tree and the wood from a single tree can be worth thousands of dollars. For decades, environmental groups have been warning of the costs of uncontrolled deforestation. Now, science and economics are revealing just how valuable those forests are. It's estimated that in forestry alone, we're losing natural capital worth between two and five trillion dollars every year. And the indigenous people who live in the forests, in fact, profit little from the large-scale farming and logging operations. The case for conserving what remains of the forests in the tropics has just got a lot stronger. Harrison Ford, actor, conservationist. Friend of frogs. Justin Singer. Denzi Dazo, symbol Buddhist monk. William. Harry. Trying to preserve the rainforests. For all of us. Rainforests help keep our climate cool and absorb nearly a sixth of our CO2 emissions. Yet, they are being destroyed at the rate of a football pitch every four seconds. For 30 years, the international community has been struggling with the question of tropical deforestation and how to stop it. And if one looks at present rates of deforestation, you can see that actually, although there have been some localised positive effects, the problem is still there on a very large scale, releasing billions of tonnes of carbon into the atmosphere, a mass extinction of species taking place, ecosystem services, including rainfall generation, being destroyed. We need a new approach, and the new approach that we need is basically an economic approach. <laughs> Norway leads the way in offering incentives to keep the forest standing, promising cash for reduced deforestation in tropical countries, including a total of $1 billion to Brazil alone if it can slow down clearance of its Amazon forest. It's absolutely essential that a proper monitoring and verification system is established. We have the satellite and the, and the technology available for that and then payments should be given to countries on the basis of uh, what they achieve. Incentives need to be on this scale because in most of the tropical countries chopping down the forest, it's the easiest way to make a profit. 
Under the conventional way of measuring wealth, cattle or crops such as soya or palm oil bring a better return than keeping the forest. The Brazilian state of Mato Grosso, more than three and a half times the size of the UK, is the most widely deforested of the Amazon states. The forest has been converted to ranches and industrial scale farmland that provides jobs and an export income for Brazil. This forest isn't coming back and for some that's a price worth paying. It's not possible to develop a country to generate jobs and income if you don't use its natural resources. We do have a lot of land and we need to use this territory. It should be used to benefit the Brazilian people. The farmers of Mato Grosso echo this sentiment. The most important living things in Mato Grosso are human beings. People are the most important things here. So if we need to cut down this tree to save a life, we will cut this tree and save a life. We are told that people are worth less than trees. This is wrong. Human beings are the most important thing here. The benefits of keeping the forest standing are not always obvious. In Brazil, research is showing that rainfall thousands of kilometers away is dependent on water that rises into the air above the Amazon rainforest. The city of Sao Paulo, thousands of kilometers to the south, is one of the surprising beneficiaries. We operate in 366 municipalities, providing water for 26 million people here in Sao Paulo state. In the metropolitan area, most of the water comes from the rain, from the sky. Each of the 26 million people who live in the Sao Paulo region uses an average of 200 litres of water a day, generating an annual turnover of $7 billion for the state water company. Flying rivers, air currents carrying clouds from 3,000 kilometres to the north deliver much of this water when they turn to rain. Right here, we are the meeting points of three waters. The Atlantic Ocean to my left, right below we have fresh water coming from the river Amazonas mixing with the sea, and to my right we have a huge amount of humid air. Now the trade winds blowing from Africa towards Brazil is carrying this humid air right across the Amazon basin until it reaches the Andes. Then this humid air is forced southbound uh, and in fact is responsible for a good portion of the rainwater, not only for Brazil, but for other parts of South America. The Amazon forest covers approximately 7 million square kilometers and represents more than half of the world's remaining rainforest. The 300 liters of water evaporating daily from every large forest tree, combined with the vapor coming from the Atlantic, means that there is more water in the sky above the Amazon than there is on the ground, according to Gerard Moss's research. It falls as rain over Central and Latin America, providing fresh water for agriculture, hydroelectric power and domestic consumption. Moss, a Swiss engineer and pilot, aims to chart the course of the flying rivers that carry clouds from Amazonia over the rest of South America. So my flying consists of a company the flying rivers. Now while in the flying river, we extract a amount of ambient air. We channel it in the aircraft through two glass tubes, which are then refrigerated at minus 80 degrees. This allows us to separate one small droplet of water. Now that allows us to determine whether this droplet came, for instance, directly from the sea or came from the evaporation of the trees and in effect we are determining the origin of rainwater for Brazil and other parts of uh, South America. In most of the southeastern part of Brazil, most of the water, in general more than 50%, in general over 70% of the water, actually comes from inland. In fact, if you trace back this water, eventually it also came from the Atlantic Ocean. But quite often you get a substantial amount of rainfall of moisture that comes from the Amazon, straight from the Amazon. We have good reasons to believe that approximately half 
of the atmospheric water present in the skies of the central part of Brazil actually come from the evaporation or transpiration of the Amazon forest. What will happen with the river of moisture if there is a substantial land use change in the Amazon? Will it have, have an impact in the rainfall in southeastern Brazil, for instance, or in northern Argentina? Models that consider, for instance, the uh, replacement of the forest by soybeans or pasture tend to reduce precipitation in the Amazon basin between 15 and 30 percent. The irony is that the rainfall that makes agriculture so profitable here is threatened by the conversion of forest to farmland.